Hi, it's Nardwar, the human serviette in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada at Neptune Records, about to speak to Boy Genius. Hey! Nardwar. Hi, it's Nardwar. Hey, hey, it's Nardwar. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Wow. Thank you. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Nardwar. 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 Who are you? I'm Phoebe. Phoebe, who do you have beside you? Lucy. I have Julian beside me. Is that the question? I, I, I have a. Uh, I am Julian. <laughs> <laughs> Lu Lucy's also beside me. Oh, why did I think that you could go to the left as well as the right? And together you are. Boy genius. Boy genius. <laughs> Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you. Thanks. Now, what type of guitars do you guys play on stage? I play a uh, BC Rich and a uh, Dan Electro. I have a Telecaster and a Gretsch. I have uh, two Telecasters, and then I have a one's a thin line, one's a solid body, and then I have an Acoustic Sonic, which are all made by Fender. And oh, Callings. Oh yeah, Callings. Acoustics. Acoustic. And right off the bat, Boy Genius, I have a gift for you. A boost pedal specially made for you. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, so what's the deal? Is well, check, uh, turn it over, oh. and the actual description is there. A triple boost pedal for the genius of Boy Genius. Three individual germanium transistor boost pedals in one single enclosure. Oh wait, 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 wait. Just so, like us. <laughs> and look, three inputs. Three inputs. Wait, so do you have, can you all do them in series, or are they like, when you turn one on, it's like one? It's all different. Ah, well, like, oh. Well, you're that close, though. You're kind of spread out. We that rocks. Closer. No, we, we can get, get close. Closer. We're like yeah. this close. Yeah. Do you have like a guy to push oh, the button? Oh my God. <laughs> Did you like make the sounds be like how you think we are? Made by Adam from Satellite Amps in San Diego. He made a custom for you. Wow. An actual boost pedal. Oh my God. I'm excited. I'm That's gonna put really this cute. on my board for the next shows. Aww. This is incredible. Wow. Well, uh, you can share it though, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We should share it. Oh, I see the D. Oh, it's all individual ones, so we can all just run our little. Yeah. yeah that we, we should put it in the center, and then at a crucial moment in the show, we, we should go. all step yeah, so on our. Can, can we do it? Wait, I'm. Oh, just. Wait, mine's the, mine's the hardest. Okay. We can do it in sequence. Okay, okay. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it like right. we'll figure we'll that practice. out. Yeah. Cuz not all the guitar parts happen at once, right? You could like divide them up. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah, we'll we practice. can share it the way that we used to share one tuner pedal in my old band. <laughs> so that's a gift for you guys. Yeah, I won't leave Boy it. genius. Let's not leave it. Just hold it like that. Thank I'll you so much. A boost tuner. Thank you, Thank you so much. No problem. And Phoebe, did it all start with Radio Disney? Oh my God, um, I, kind of, although I, so I competed in a Radio Disney contest at Ikea. No. Um, I don't know about this. I forget what I sang. I think it was maybe Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson. Um, oh my God, and you broke away. But yeah, but, but I did break away. I think it also got like rain checked, so like nobody won. But maybe that was on purpose. I don't know. For the little kids, that's tight. But, uh, but I kind of already thought I was hot shit at that point, so... You know, but maybe it did start at all. And what about Brian Million? Did he help with music? Wait, who's Brian Million? He turned you on to a lot of music. Brian Million. I'm sorry to this man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who is this? When you were growing up, how did you discover music aside from Radio Disney? Um, well, my mom's friend Matt made me like a 4,000 song playlist that I really loved. And I have a friend called Brian De Leon. That must be it. Brian De Leon. Oh my God. Okay. Sorry about the nerd oh, pronunciation. Okay. We love Brian. We are we're actually playing tonight with um, Illuminati Hotties and Zach in that band was in a band with me and Brian and we were called Phoebe and the He Men for a second and then we were called uh, Einstein's Dirty Secret for some reason. So I love. What? what? Yeah, That's I such a. And now Brian Brian plays with Ethel Kane. Oh cool. Oh yeah. wait, we did meet this Brian. Yes. 
a teeny tiny world. Yes. Nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> question authority. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So question authority was my first first band. Which uh That's so good. It's because my father had a like we did what's it called? Like the little cars that are this big that race each other? Pinewood Derby? Yes. Derby? Soapbox is the bigger one. Oh. Pinewood Derby is the that. And he wrote Question Authority on mine and I thought that was so sick. So when I was like thirteen I had a band called Question Authority. You've always been rock and rolling in bands. Here's a picture of you at the <laughs> smell <laughs> with sloppy jean. Could you explain? <laughs> Uh, that's oh the guy God. we love. Yes. I was feeling it in this moment. This was actually a dress. Uh, there's the video. There's a video of me singing Georgia in a red f- version of this dress. I don't know where it's from. But yeah, we were we were like not y- naked yet in this band. But, but it was only a matter of time. Imogen, Sarah, Haley, me. What can you say about the smell? Playing the smell. I love the smell. Every show was five bucks except for when No Age played because... More people wanted to go, so they made it ten dollars. I love the smell. One of the bands also to play the smell, and I have another gift for you. Was Mika Miko, uh-huh. who turned into Bleached on wow. Dead on Dead Oceans. Dead Oceans, uh, so cool. That's amazing. Dead Oceans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're a great label. They love you, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> And Lucy, I have a gift for you, an Angela Davis 1970 edition of Life. That's really cool. Damn. What can you say about Angela Davis? I have like notated there where you can look at. What can you say about that? You like reading your books. Yeah, I do. Wow. Ooh, this is awesome. This is one of our greatest minds, to be real. Um, thank you. What sort of books have you read by Angela Davis? Like on tour? I read I read uh uh, freedom is a constant struggle uh, a couple years ago, um, which has a lot to do with like um, freeing Palestine and just how like that movement should be proliferated through lots of different movements in the world. Yeah, she's great. What is Bitnia? 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 Oh, Bithia? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Whoa. Um... How do you know this? It's uh, a like pat. It's okay. Between the streets that I grew up on, there was like a wooded area that was basically a glorified ditch that me and my friend would go to and pretend to be in like a different world. And we named all the trees and we went and visited them and they had dramatic lives. What sort of tree names would Lucy give? Ooh. Oh my God. Um,. I like a, are you like a Bartholomew guy? Like, is, do, are there big names like for dogs? Big names, yeah. yeah. I feel like you wouldn't be above like a Gerald. Yeah, if the tree's name is Gerald, I'm gonna call it Gerald. <laughs> and you are boy. Genius. Genius. <laughs> Idiot. A- Thank you, Craigslist. Thank you, Craigslist. For Todd. Oh my gosh, yeah, my first guitar is a three-quarter Ibanez uh, acoustic guitar that I still have, and Todd was my uh, first boyfriend's middle name. Uh, I learned Just Like Heaven by The Cure on that guitar. Cute. Yeah. How does that dovetail with your experience with guitar, Phoebe? Uh, whoa, how does it dovetail? I don't know. Where'd you get your first guitar? Um, my dad's friend Dave. Give it to me. Right. What'd you learn? Uh, uh, Woody Guthrie. <gasps> yeah. Sick. No, wait. Hank Williams, excuse me. Uh, okay, <laughs> right. You're excused. Uh, yeah. I, uh, Yodel Boy song. Uh, Yodel Boy. Uh, <laughs> what is the name of that song? Uh, <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember either. Yeah. I don't know why I put you to that. Oh Love Ju- Julian, speaking of country and Hank Williams, horses ride. Horses ride. Them or great story. Bro. Garrett. <laughs> Garrett. Garrett? Wicker. Galtelli? Uh, horses. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, horses ride them or don't. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, Brian. Okay, Wicker is a band that anyone can be in and everyone is already in. And you play on that song, don't you? I do play on that song, and I play guitar in their band sometimes. And you have a wicker tattoo? I do have a wicker tattoo. It's on my leg. Can we see it, possibly? Can get it up well, there? No, you can't get it up there. Or can we see, or can we see the Boy Genius tattoo, possibly? Wait, we have to, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, could you explain? Yeah, we all have songs about biting or dogs or teeth, where, like... Uh, maybe you could show it to the camera. Canine... Symbolism. It? It's and this one. And then I have the Three of Cups. I was so afraid of tarot. And then they pulled my card for the first time ever. And it was the Three of Cups, which is a card about friendship. Quote, will you be an... I know this one. Is it anarchist? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I being self-referential if I say anarchist? There's plenty of things that people could be asked to be. Um, the song Satanist. Yeah, I know that one. And I have a gift for you. From 1961, Satan's Theme by the Rondells. Amazing. Satan's Theme. And check out what the B-side of Satan's Theme is called. My Prayer. What an amazing juxtaposition. Subversive, the rondels. I can't wait to play this. Thank you. Could you sing a tiny bit of the Satan theme what? for us? <laughs> Just a tiny bit, boy genius. Would you sing this a tiny bit for us? Or $20? <laughs> a Satanist with me. No, but I, I can it's tell done. you this. It has this, happened. This is a window into what hell might actually be like. <laughs> Ah, boom. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Well, Phoebe, I have another gift for you right here. Oh. A Nico Case oh. LP. God. Wow. Mm. You probably know that one of the first songs I ever played on guitar was Wish I Was the Moon. From the year 2000. Wow. What can you see about Nico Case? Obsessed. She, the coolest her. ever. We all love her. And you cover her as well, don't you? Yeah, I did a cover of Man. I think that one's from uh, The Harder I Try, but I love all her records. I'm a huge fan and a new pornographers fan, and we're in Vancouver. Are they a Vancouver band? Yes, they're from Vancouver. That's what I thought. And you interviewed the pornographers. Oh, gosh, yes, I did. And I felt With Matt from Chavez. I know. I felt like such a silly little nerd, but it was fun. And Vancouver, also the home of Peach Pit. Peach Pit. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Fit. That's a good band. From Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Love that. I think I tried to get them to play a show with me in 2015, not knowing that that just wouldn't happen. Isn't like, uh, isn't uh, uh, Japan Droids? Yes. From here too. Brian. I love Japan Droids. I do. Japan Droids. Big reference for this band. Well, Nico did live in Vancouver for a while, and she was in one band called Mao. And what is she wearing? Wow. Oh my well, gosh! That's so tight. Amazing. Well, in 1996, could you explain the skeleton Nico Phoebe connection? Y y I mean, it is kind of universal. Wait, good you know, they're they're within all of us. Are the tits I feel connected to everybody. Yeah, is it tits on a skeleton? Is no, that what I that is? The tits are cut out. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, that's a combo. Yeah. I'm surprised I did not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shirts with shit cut out of them and skeletons. That is that's like true. actually that's the proto. And that's the Nico in action. Phoebe wore the skeleton suit, was on, I, I played a Halloween show and she secret opened. And it was just her costume. Yeah. Cute. And speaking of boy genius, what can you say about this picture right here? What is going on here? Well, that's you. <laughs> right. And Chastity Belt. Okay. And... Oh. <laughs> Molina! Oh, that's our boy. Yeah. Whoa. Molina plays ox, everything, and bass, and guitar, and keys, and drum and pad. Horn. And a horn. Jason, what can you say about Jason? Just the best yes. band. I have a thing called the Jason effect, where if you hear a song while you're out and you like it, it's probably a Jason song. <laughs> yeah. Like at a coffee shop or something, like this bangs. What is it? It's Jason. Yeah. And you will see her on stage, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Tonight. Yes. Tonight. With boy. Genius! Yes. Phoebe! Hey! 
I have another <laughs> gift for you. And right here, a sealed L7 oh cassette. <laughs> wow. Hungry oh. for Stink. That's amazing. From 1994. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. You were always born. And wow. you've really promoted them. Like, you wore their T-shirt. I know. I wore that T-shirt, like, twice, and now I never can again, which is sad. You can wear it again. No, I'll do it again. It's iconic. It's the best shirt ever. Yeah. But that's a later period, cool. L7. Oh. Hungry for stink. Still sealed, too. Amazing. Thank you, dude. How did you get into L7? Uh, I mean, my parents, probably. Um, you know, like one of those things that is just in your life and you don't yeah. know why. Yeah. I think it was on that giant playlist also that my mom's friend Matt made for me when I was a kid. And speaking of clothing and t-shirts, what you have on now is amazing. Thank you. Could you explain what's going on here? Um, well, yeah, you do it. Um, I have a friend from high school, Alexandra Mitchell, who has always been like this, like always decorating her walls with a bunch of stuff, cutting stuff out of magazines and collecting things. And she just texts me like boy genius related ideas all the time. And we wanted like patch jackets. And I was like, go for it and she sourced like all of these patches and patches for four more jackets for the whole band and they're all like references to our lyrics and our history from like the EP and the record. And then these ones that are like attached, more attached to the jacket um, are custom from Rusty Cuts who made our jackets from the first tour as well. And what other outfits do you guys have during the tour? Are those all exclusively for the tour? Yeah, well, we have our little suits, our little schoolboy prep school suits. We got our fancy stuff. We got our Gucci suits. We got our Tom Brown suits and stuff. Is your Death Angel shirt a dude magnet? It is a dude <laughs> magnet, I am it's telling you. Than, yeah, this dude, because Phoebe <laughs> gave me that shirt, and then I'll be, like, wearing it out. I met the dude from Converge, and he was like, Death Angel, sick. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I was in Whole Foods and a dude came up to me and was like, sick shirt. And it was Steve-O. <laughs> See, good taste. People that have good taste like it. But I'm like, my buddy Phoebe gave it to me. And Lucy, I have another gift for you. A Bruce Springsteen <laughs> poster. <laughs> oh my God, Dad, look. <laughs> Wow, I love him. I saw him for the first time this year with my dad and my brother, um, which was like a bucket. I need to get like new stuff on my bucket list because it's over now that I've seen this. But yeah, legend. And you cover him too. I do. I like him. Wow, this is really cool. I'm getting... I, that's a gift for you. This is like Christmas. Thank you. From 1984. Are you serious? Yeah, 1984 original. I'm like, dude, I've never seen this photo of Bruce. Look at all this. I wanna so, uh, I'm God, the, the jeans were so tight. So I know, I was like, I yeah. forgot about jeans that also, tight being a fad. Like, he has stayed fit. That guy is doing it. Like, he's got energy I do not have personally mm. right now. So your dad, like Springsteen, also skateboarding? Yes. Yeah, he was into skateboarding and dirt biking. Uh, really into skateboarding? Like, he was Good. Good at it. Yeah. How do you know this? <laughs> yeah, my dad. Well, you are a boy genius. We have to know. Julian, was The Feeder the first band you saw cry on stage? <gasps> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then it was, we were on tour. <sighs> I'm having, like, That's a Raven, but backwards in the past. Like, uh, uh, um, Memory? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in this jacket back on. There's a uniform. They want to make fun of me. Then they want to make me conform. That's your anti curse. Anyway. Uh, I don't even remember about. Oh, Defeater! Yes, we stayed. Uh, okay, so we were on this like little summer tour with the Star Killers, my old band, and we got our show in the next town canceled because it was like a house to like three people. So we stayed because Defeater was playing there, and then he. Uh, Derek, I believe his name is, cried on stage, and then afterwards everybody was like, oh my god, it's so sick that he was crying on stage. And then it turned out that he had, like, a hip or, like, a some, like, painful chronic pain injury. And I remember, like, in real time having, like, learning the lesson of, like, I don't know everything that's going on in a performer's life. And being like, why is he crying? Why is everybody excited about it? 
it was weird. But it was the first time I'd had that thought. Have you ever cried on stage? Oh, absolutely. Don't love it, but it happens. What about you, Phoebe? Yes. And how about on this tour? Have you guys come close to crying? Yes. Yeah, close. I definitely have. When was that? I feel like really hard one time. It's cool on this tour because I think it's less noticeable because if I stop singing, there's still two people singing. Mm. Yeah. So. I almost cried. Maybe it was the Toronto show when everybody did the... Yeah. yeah. Oh, fully. I, yes. Right. What happened? They like held up lights. Like they put little um, plastic colored things over their phone flashlight. So it made a pretty... bisection. And it was like so well organized. It was a rainbow. And like one person made. So thank you, Coldplay. Didn't they invent that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did thank Coldplay? you, Coldplay. Um, yeah, Coldplay. Yeah. It was bisection, and they let it up. Yeah, like just a fan did this, and yeah. like uh, I think it was like ten thousand people, and it was like just mass. It looked Isn't it like, like a sixteen thousand people. Oh, maybe it was sixteen thousand people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, like, and that was an amazing moment. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. The social scene opened. Let's just oh, say Canada, Toronto. Which that. What, that makes you want to cry to even it think about. Amazing. I was concussed. That was special. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, that was extraordinary. Yeah. It wasn't special. special doesn't mean good. Boy genius, winding up here, I wanted to ask you and give you this record right here. What can you say about this record? Oh! <laughs> and we love um, this. Yeah, obviously. I actually, admittedly, didn't know about this before our band, and then everyone's like, oh, obviously they're doing a trio right. thing, and we were like, yeah, completely, for um, sure, but... They changed the words to, is it after the Gold Rush on here, or is that a different record? Oh, I think it is on a different record. I think they changed the words to that because um, there's reference to marijuana. Which is funny. What, would, so they changed the words to it? I thought it was like something that was like... So who is the trio, just for people? Dream blunt rotation, you <laughs> said? I mean, okay, um, looks-wise, obviously, Phoebe, Julie, and me. Just a complexion and hair. But it is literally Dolly, Emmy, Lou, Linda. I think that's what he was asking. Who oh. is trio? <laughs> I thought you were saying who of who. <laughs> well, yeah. That, obviously, that hair so only. Yeah. yeah. An amazing insert. Check out the insert. <laughs> What do you think about the insert? I love an insert. Ooh. Whoa, that's awesome. That yeah, that's really sick. cute. I want to know about the kid that actually cut these out and like played with it. That would be awesome. Put them on awesome. dolls. Oh my gosh. That's I love so it. Cool. You can dress it up. Like wow. wow. I've never seen this. And that is from 1987, a gift for you. But you, Phoebe, aren't really a fan of 80s drum sounds. Am I not? Are you not really into 80s drum sounds, like the big 80s drum sound? I feel like I have strong convictions weekly. How did I do that? A big 80s drum sound. <laughs> yeah, how so did you do that? When you said weekly held, I thought week, week to week. Every week. Well, every week you too. have like strong convictions. committee for all your strong opinions. Probably since saying that, I put rototoms on something. Wait, but also, like, when people are, like, 80s drum sound, and I'm like, drum sounded like 500 different things in the 80s. Yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. that... But I know what you mean, like a fucking like gated verb rat ass like yeah. snare. Like, yeah. but that's pretty. cool. It depends on what cool. song you put it on. If it if it's in like a Def Leppard tune, it works. If it's in like a Prince tune, like a pop tune, it works. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that conspiracy theory? Like Def Leppard was produced by Mutt Lang, and Mutt Lang eventually went on to Shania. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you listen to Shania's records knowing that, like, the producer's a metal guy, weren't we just talking Wait, about no, this? No, this makes so much sense yeah. because on that record on Come On Over and the one right after... Da, 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 da. Like, Wait, no, but then it also heavy. is kind of, it's, like, classically technical, too, because that fucking, uh, is it Man, I Feel Like a Woman, is in, like, three different keys. Like, the verse, bridge, and chorus are, like, not lateral key changes. Yes. When she's like... Whoa, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah, you can get me to sing that any day. <laughs> well, could you please? No. Oh. It happened. <laughs> Man. Boy, genius in action. <laughs> Now, we had Phoebe there singing a bit, but what does Phoebe know about chainsaws? Mm. I think you'll have to ask Phoebe. 
What does Phoebe know about chainsaws? You're not chainsaw certified, are you? What no. does what does Phoebe know oh about God. chainsaws? <laughs> Do you recognize this person? Oh. This is Chad. Yes, Chad Gilbert. <laughs> this is Chad Gilbert from Newfound Glory. I was in a Newfound Glory music video. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't know that. I was like, <laughs> this is the day I met Haley, Haley Williams. Oh, wow. Wait, do you look, somebody. you actually look littler. I was yeah, littler. I, mean, you look like a kid. I was also all worried that the blood was going to stain my hair. So they like were really nice to me and like wet my hair before the video. You've been on this tip for a while. I have. I was like 19. Damn. That's oh so gosh, wild, and I babies. and I got to use a chainsaw, which was so tight. A real one? Yes. Wow. So it, was on, it didn't have the blade in it. Okay. What do you remember about that day? Um, Just the blood. Blood everywhere. Yes, I ruined a pair of pants in a cool way. Manifest destiny ate my homework. <laughs> Smith Seven. Yeah. yeah. Didn't I wear that fucking gray shirt? That, like, I know. I did say Manifest Destiny ate my homework. They're a king of the like weird, like a sentence long titles. Could you explain Smith Seven? I'd love to. Uh, a patch. Yeah, I do. There's a guy named, I don't even know how to say it. It's like Records, Smith Seven Records is what they call themselves, but they used to book. It's like Brian Vernon, the like guy who heads it all up, and this other dude, Ryan Haley, skates. They like would put on shows and. Brian used to work at Cat's Music. We used to have house shows and like book shows at Spawn. And whenever bands would need money to like print t shirts, Brian had a day job and he'd just be like, here's $500, pay me back whenever. Like a no interest, like truly an artist collective that didn't know that it was calling itself that and didn't have like pamphlets or like reading rooms and was just like weird, like skateboard kid gift economy. Like, yeah, I got a Christmas bonus. Do y'all want to make some? CDs. It was just like really easy and sweet. And they gave us money to make t-shirts and a space to be. You were kind of here today because of Smith 7. Thank you, Smith 7. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. And Phoebe, what did Julian look like back then? Me. (laughs) (laughs) We had very short bleached hair. Around the same time. Was that Mohawk days? It was Mohawk days. And then I had a little rat rat tail growing out in the back. And Julian, what did Lucy look like back then? This, mostly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I never dyed my hair. We were just at my mom's house. You yeah. saw those photos? You were like the, like the same. But a little bit more like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You so, had a lot of like had hair up. You had a beanie with Bill and like. Yeah, I feel like there was a little bit more of, like, Blazers. this action. Yeah. Like, thumb through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blazer. Yeah, you had a blazer for sure. <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> How enterprising is Julian? Enterprising? Whoa. Uh, okay. Can we define the terms? <laughs> yeah. Cause... Enterprising uh, commercial ambition or, like, effectiveness completing a project? Puck Fresh Blog. All right. <laughs> All right. I did pay. I paid money. I paid. I I participated in the scam of self-promotion, and I paid money to get a Forrester. Okay, there was a Pup Fresh blog, and it was, like, where all the, like, balance and composure and, like, people would, like, learn about, like, daylight, super heaven. And then I paid to get us a pop-up ad of our band when our single came oh. out. Oh. You choked it. up, and I paid. Yeah, but I was that. This was also me trying to book house shows during the summer, emailing people to whom it may concern, and it's like some guy named Roach in a house show. <laughs> <laughs> to whom it may concern, and then I would attach like yeah. press links. Well, I, let, I let my eighteen-year-old manager buy Facebook fans for me. Oh no, that that's really no good. Did you ever pretend to be your own manager? I'd be like, I'm oh, emailing yeah, on behalf of you. hundred percent. She would like to play your living room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it always work? A lot of the time. I didn't have any music out, but I would uh, put two MP3s of songs that would end up on No Burden. And I was like, proof. And people were like, fine. It's really low stakes. I hope that's still happening. Me too. People like doing DIY booking tours. Yeah, I hope they're finding out one kernel at a time that the gate isn't like... People keeping the gate, the lock's not all that hard, and if you just jiggle it, it'll open for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh-huh. Thank you, Mrs. Silverman. 
Oh, man. Yeah. Mrs. Silverman was my apex teacher in elementary yeah. school. She pulled me out of uh, kindergarten. And, yeah, everybody thought I had a behavior problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not I... anymore. <laughs> no way. Because <laughs> I was bored. <laughs> anyway, she asked me what I wanted to learn about. She was the first person that ever asked me that. And I said, what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? And we spent all day learning about it. And <laughs> it's cute. And now we are here at oh, Neptune Records. Yes, thank you, Miss Silverman. <laughs> Now, I know you like to eat, because you have to have food before you perform, right? Yes, I do have to have food before I perform. And I was curious, Pearlie's, what can you say about Pearlie's? Oh my God, best restaurant in Richmond, Virginia. It's a Jewish deli. Um, the smoked Caesar salad is great. The Reuben is great. The, fry, the Shelby fries are great. The Brussels sprouts are great. Um, what would you order for your bandmates? Um, well, they're, they're particular people. <laughs> What would I order for you guys? What did you get? You know. Oh, there's there's a um the Benny Goodman is I love that you can say you know. You know, you know what I would get. Um the salad. The smoked Caesar salad. But the there's a Benny Goodman which is like a Benedict, <laughs> like like a, the breakfast like Benedict. Um but it's latkes instead of bread and it's smoked salmon instead of ham and poached eggs. And what about for Phoebe? That's probably what I would get for you. I'd yeah. probably eat half of it, and I'd eat the other half. <laughs> I think it's so cool that Boy Genius were on Genius. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That was cool. They named that after us. Like, Boy <laughs> Genius. Have you encountered other geniuses? All the time. How do you have taken Genius as a name? Have you encountered other geniuses? I feel like every day there's geniuses around me. But do you mean, like, nominally? I feel like the more that I experience myself as a genius, the more it's available to see in other people that I meet, right? Oh, yeah. If we're calling like, ourselves genius, like, pretty if much I'm a genius, a genius, then like I'll meet somebody and be like, mm, you're a genius. Yeah. You know? Nar Nardwar has some genius stuff going on. You have a, you have you a, genius. a genius. You have a good hat for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good hat for it. I genius. Have, yeah, I have genius pants energy. just like these pants. Yeah. Tiger of London. Tiger of London. Oh, no. Mine are trip brand. <laughs> Where'd you get them? At Hot Topic. Ugh. They're really tight, though. They're, like, not the big trip pants. They're, like, extremely, like, sausage casing tight. Uh, it's kind of your style. Tartan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird. I'm trying to be, like, Sex Pistols, but make it 2007. Yeah. It was bad look. But you pull it off. Well, thank you so much, Boy Genius. I really appreciate the kind words. And thank you for this interview coming all the way to Neptune Records in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? We love you. Yeah. This is great. We love you. Yeah. Thanks for interviewing us. Oh, thank you. Sweet. Yeah. It's an honor. Uh, it's, it's a dream for all of us, so thanks. Thanks for spying on all of us. <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Wait a sec. What did I say? The sweetest that you could have said, and you did the sweet spy. The, the yeah. sweet spy. Surveillance for good. Yeah. Why should people care about Boy Genius? Why should people care? <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, that's if you good. if you're compelled to, that rocks. And if it skips you, it does. You don't have to, but you should, because we made it with you in mind. Yeah, I think it's good. So it's a gift to the people that it gets played for. Even if you don't like it, it's a still a gift. Well, thanks so much, Boy Genius. Keep on rocking in the free world. And do, 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 do. Yeah. Wait, are we posing? I, I'm not sure, <laughs> but this felt right. I was um, doing... Maybe for Canada, this. What do you mean for... I, I thought you meant like <laughs> <Yeah>. for Canada. <laughs> for like, like for the, the USA. <laughs> Did we get any good photos? It's not... I don't think it's It's never photo. over. That's I part think, of the bit. I think it's a video. I'm just going to make unbroken fourth wall eye contact. Help. <laughs> I'm gonna hide behind this man. I, I don't want to be looking, but I can't look away. Okay. <laughs>